Okay, um, nice to see you. Um, just to start, um, so the plan for today is to um, finish somehow, uh, hopefully, um, today uh, the discussion about um, uh, BIP's uh, assembly. Um, we started, nice start. Hello. <laughs> So uh, we have started uh, MIPS assembly for a while now. Hopefully uh, you have some impression uh, and most of you I'm hoping that uh, now see um, the benefits uh, of writing in assembly, gain some skill to write some very basic programs in assembly somehow. it's. Um, the learning curve at the beginning might be um, a steep, but once you uh, got some basic understanding um, about different uh, uh, instructions, the semantics of instructions, and more importantly, um, putting these instructions together uh, in order to write um, similar programs that you used to or are still writing in um, high level uh, programming languages um, such as C. Um, so I'm, I, I'm hoping um, you, you, you now should feel at least better, um, hopefully. Um, and um, from next week, um, the plan is to um, change the direction a little bit. Um, still, we'll get back from time to time to programming assembly because it's fun. Um, so you, you will certainly have uh, more homework uh, regarding assembly, uh, right? Uh, but in terms of lectures, uh, we will discuss um, more somehow theoretical aspect. Uh, we cannot continue with this programming fun stuff forever. Uh, you guys need to know more about uh, computer architecture. Uh, we'll uh, turn the focus um, more into one level um, deeper. Um, talking about implementing instruction set architecture, and mainly about micro architecture. Um, we will start um, some basic um, concepts in micro architecture. And as we go, um, this will, um, we will discuss uh, about some very fundamental um, concepts, very important concepts um, in macro architectures. Um, so hopefully you, um, you could claim that you know uh, what is computer architecture because without knowing about macro architecture um, and just being able to program um, in assembly, uh, you cannot call it that you know everything about computer architecture, right? Uh, that's important. That's the practical aspect of um, one of the practical aspects of computer architecture. But that's I want you to know that that is not everything about computer architecture, right? So we cannot stay um, talking about uh, assembly forever. Um, but we'll get back to it uh, from time to time. So do you have any questions so far? Everything is good? OK, um, let's talk about function call, um, similar to um, high level languages. Um, we need this uh, building block um, to be able to um, write uh, functions. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, why we need function. Um, hopefully, you know why, right? Um, because um, this gives uh, a very um, important uh, um, capability uh, 
the power of abstraction. Um, with functions, um, you can uh, you can basically make your code more modular. Um, making a code more modular, this this is very powerful concepts um, in any programming languages uh, because then you and functions are like one way of uh, one level of uh, abstractions in any programming languages. There are certainly different uh, capabilities depending on particular language. As you know, like this abstraction level varies from one particular language to another. Uh, but functions uh, are in assembly uh, one of those uh, fundamental uh, capabilities um, that, that, that gives you uh, the ability to, um, to make your code more modular, uh, to make it uh, more complex as a result and uh, write some um, more uh, interesting programs um, that uh, are able to um, to uh, to expose uh, more complex function uh, more complex functionality as a result, right? Um, okay, uh, void functions. Um, the reason is obviously we discussed right frequently access code. Um, everything that um, you want to um, reuse in your program, you want to call it multiple times, um, you want to turn it into a module, uh, into a function, right? Um, also, readability is important. Um, maybe um, you, can, um, you can write a very linear assembly program uh, because uh, you see everything clearly for you is very clear. Uh, but not really for others. Um, so uh, beside uh, ability to, um, to build some level of abstractions uh, and the thing that makes uh, the code uh, um, uh, give you the power that you can, um, you can write uh, more complex programs uh, but also um, this uh, enable maintainability of your code as well, right? Because uh, maybe you know everything about this code that you, you write, but like uh, other ones to also use it. Uh, this may be integrated into um, a larger system. Um, somebody else uh, may need to uh, um, may need to use it or even change it uh, or debug it. Um, so anything that helps the readability, you know that it is important in any programming languages, uh, but also in assembly, right? Um, because um, yes, uh, maybe um, these days um, you won't need to, <laughs> write uh, many programs in assembly uh, because that's um, we've mentioned it several times right uh, typically this would be translated directly by the compiler from high level language to uh, all the way down to machine code uh, but um, for some very specific systems like for example when you want to write um, the kernel um, in operating system, um, when you want to um, uh, write a compiler, um, when you want to um, write a program for a microcontroller, for example, for uh, for an embedded system, where um, you really cannot afford to. Um, uh, you do not have much of flexibility uh, in terms of memory, in terms of resources there. Um, the only available option uh, is, is really assembly, right? So it's not the case that in 
all scenarios uh, never you you need a sample sometimes you need uh, and as a result making any code um, including assembly uh, readable is important right the same um, reasons as you have you might have learned in uh, software engineering courses how many of you by the way took software engineering course already Uh, others besides Ross uh, want to get an understanding, um, or maybe I ask uh, who did not take already any software engineering courses. So by software engineering, I mean the course that um, you you learn about software engineering processes uh, stuff, right? Um, okay, um, that's good. Um, so hopefully um, these, um, these are stuff that I'm mentioning now, um, you can connect with, right? Um, about the importance of uh, readability. Okay, and Mori, you did not, okay. Mm -hmm. Bella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, and, and please do ask your question. Um, if you have any, any question about uh, these um, that I'm mentioning, because it's also important, right? Um, um, basically, um, again, um, similar to other programming languages, similar to uh, foundation of software engineering, um, you want to write um, a readable code or maintainable code, right? Um, so, um, and, and, and also giving you the, the ability to, uh, to write once and reuse many times. And this uh, one other important aspect, uh, which, is, uh, which is also uh, very fundamental in software engineering overall, um, this level of abstractions, besides making it readable, modular, uh, gives you the power of localizing change, right? So um, when you have a small module, um, when it comes for debugging, uh, when it comes to testing, uh, it gives you again, uh, not only during development, but also during testing. Um, that you can localize uh, part of the code very, um, very beautifully, and you can be, you can find a bug in a small part of the code rather than like searching through the whole uh, program that might be um, you may not be able even to find a bug as a result, right? So uh, localizing um, part of the code for during testing. Um, basically, uh, is also important to, to debug your code um, and and um, and basically uh, um, to uh, to find any uh, or also um, and also beside debugging, um, but this happens mainly during debugging and testing the change or evolution of your code. Um, so uh, when you make any change um, in part of the code, which is separate from the rest, right? Um, so you, you make change in maybe separate file, separate uh, module, and you don't need to recompile the whole thing. You, you compile, re recompile uh, the stuff that you have changed, right? So um, when you, change, make changes um, to, to your code, these changes, this cost that you need to pay um, becomes, um, becomes also localized um, in terms of um, the cost of compilation, the cost of um, dependencies, a track of dependencies between modules. Um, and it makes the life of software engineers a lot easier. Um, so, um, and, and as a result, um, um, your system would 
evolve more peacefully rather than um, you know a, a disruptive uh, evolution. Um, again, these are true for all um, types of systems, for all types of programming languages, um, for types of programs that you you, you write with different languages, right? Uh, including assembly code. So these are, again, fundamental, very important concepts. Um, and, and I'm emphasizing mentioning this because uh, for particular reason, you, you should always know the why, right? In order to, um, to write a better program, to, to become a better engineer, uh, to become a better scientist, right? These are very important. Um, otherwise, if you don't know the why, um, you are not uh, able to um, to learn and um, um, to do better job, right? Um, so why always matters. Okay, uh, functions have arguments uh, and return value. Uh, you know, um, so you um, basically the way how you communicate with a function is through these two, right? So input, uh, the arguments are a way to um, give this function some data, to send this function some data to use to calculate, right? Um, so these are inputs to the function. Return value is a way that function communicates um, with, uh, with a part of the code that uh, calls the function, right? Um, which is called callee, right? This is uh, one example, um, very simple example. Uh, sum is a function that gets um, two arguments, A and B, and return the sum, right? So sum these two input. Um, and then return the uh, the value uh, to the callee, uh, which in this case is the main uh, procedure, right? Um, and this this code is in C, obviously. Very simple. Um, so um, sorry, caller. Yeah. Um, so caller is the calling function, um, which is in this case is main. Callee is the um, called function. Um, this is typically is, um, is the used terminology, but but you get the idea, right? Um, do you have any question about this? Uh, so hopefully this this is um, clear uh, for many of you. And again, please, I want to repeat that. Um, I'm not as scary. Uh, if if you have any question, um, and hopefully you uh, you saw this before, if you ask questions, um, any question, like um, even um, if if you think your question might be uh, uh, stupid or something, uh, certainly it is not. Um, so. Um, it's, it's always uh, good to ask questions and um, this would help not only you, but also others, um, but also me uh, to explain things differently. So hopefully you can learn better and uh, you realize sometimes when some of you ask questions, um, you, you learn better, uh, hopefully. And I, I also realize that I can explain things maybe better. Um, so this Somebody is, um, asked a question in the chat. Uh, yeah, thanks. Let me look at it. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, please. Hopefully, you can turn on your um, mic. Um, but yeah, I, I'll also answer this. Uh, are the functions names essentially labels? Um, uh, that's it. Um, in MIPS, right? Um, so that, that's a good question. Um, does anybody wants to answer this? So 
So like, are we talking about like, like, a, like something like add I or like load or something like that? So um, as far as I, uh, this is a very fundamental and very uh, important question. I like, I like this question. So basically, you know that like um, the labels in um, and MIPS are, are sort of like, uh, looks like a cheat, right? Is is somehow doesn't, I mean, only like help us to, um, to, to jump to different part of the memory in a way. Uh, and seems that um, there, there are, uh, these are some uh, construct labels are uh, somehow construct to uh, to change the orders uh, of um, instructions in some arbitrary way um, in assembly and um, is there just a label and if in in your program like it feels that if for example in your instruction you don't use jump to any particular label, your program code execute as uh, sequentially, right? Uh, these labels essentially don't do anything uh, to change the, um, the execution of your program. Um, in some sense, if you don't use uh, jump to this a particular label, right? So if you don't exploit these labels, um, they seem that uh, they're not doing anything and they're not really, um, they don't feel as if they're an important construct in, in your language. Like, for example, you feel that, like, for example, in C, um, you have different constructs. Um, for example, when you declare an array, it feels like an array, right? <laughs> Which is different from, like, when you, um, when you, for example, um, uh, declare an integer, right? Um, they feel totally different construct. Um, or, or, um, or basically, um, if uh, your um, program language gives you if as a construct um, to use, um, this feels that this construct is different than um, while construct. And while construct is essentially different from for as a uh, program language construct. But like the way how, uh, how we use assembly, we somehow emulated this, right? Uh, so I get, uh, I get your point that they, they feel somehow uh, all of these constructs feel somehow emulated rather than the real constructs that are totally different, right? Um, so we emulated in a way like for while all of these in a sense with like very basic uh, construct that, um, that, that, that basically uh, MIPS gave us or other even LC3 gave us, right? Um, so there are um, essentially uh, they feel, uh, it feels like uh, they're not uh, as important, right? Um, but um, functions essentially, uh, yes, so to, to answer uh, your questions directly, uh, Yes, uh, the, uh, the functions uh, are also uh, somehow uh, not real construct, as, as you guess, uh, we use labels uh, in order to emulate a concept of function, right? Uh, we somehow uh, use um, labels um, to facilitate this emulation. Right, so they're not real construct that gives you like um, building block to to really uh, define a function 
um, or declare a function um, which might be totally different from like other uh, other construct, right? So we, we built and emulate uh, functions similarly with labels um, as we have used for like um, some other construct, like, uh, um, like for example, if, um, right? Um, so uh, hopefully this answered your question and um, this is what you wanted to hear, right, Eric? Does it answer your question? Good. Very, very good question. Yeah, I like it. Um, but even if um, emulated, still useful. <laughs> still useful, right? Um, yeah, these labels are useful. Um, so, um, some convention um, that uh, we need to use, um, and this convention again are conventions, um, like it, um, and this convention really some of some of them you can certainly violate if you want. I mean, you should not. <laughs> But you can. Uh, there are arbitrary convention uh, to um, to build reusable, and maintainable programs. Um, some of them you cannot uh, really. Um, you cannot like violate. You you can uh, you can hack it. Still, <laughs> you can do anything in assembly. Uh, but uh, for example, like. Uh, one of those convention, uh, sort of convention is uh, register zero, right? Um, so for example, register zero, you cannot write anything to, to zero, it's always zero, okay? Uh, if, if you also try to write something, like the value won't change, okay? You, you, you do not see the effect of that, that, that change um, because it's there for, for a reason, um, right? Um, but some of some other conventions, you can really, um, some of them you can violate uh, if you want, um, but uh, you should not really. Um, so the color passes argument, right? Um, jumps to the collie, um, the function, um, that you wrote, Kali um, performed the procedure uh, that it's supposed to do and returned the result to the caller. Obvious, okay? Um, but also should return to the point of call, right? And think about it. Uh, it's important um, because uh, and this is related to the question that uh, Eric asked, right? So think about like C function. Um, when you write uh, a C code, okay, um, do you need to be worried about like at the end of <laughs> at the end of the code, uh, like you should um, um, you should really um and do something specific right so i mean um uh, typically you you should use return right um to to say that okay this is the written uh, value that i want to send uh but even sometimes uh you do not explicitly in some languages right you do not explicitly return anything right so you do um, some manipulation um, and um, and the other stuff, the way how it works, um, basically the compiler will take care of it. Like everything has its own semantic, but here um, the colleague should take care of this because it should really um, 
return to the right place in the program um, to continue with the execution, right? And the right place, we know that like right after the instruction that um, you called um, the Kali, uh, right? Um, so in, in, uh, in the caller, um, at some point you need to um, call um, um, the Kali or jump to the Kali, better jump to the Kali because like the Kali is really nothing, just a label. Uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, but also, uh, and that's why it is emulated because like everything should be taken care of like by themselves, they're not like um, pre-built construct. We need to emulate them ourselves. We need to take care of everything ourselves uh, in order to preserve the semantic of, um, of the program that you want to write. Would otherwise like, um, if you don't do that, it basically continues the execution of like whatever instruction are uh, located after um, after the callie, uh, whatever it is, which is not something you want to do, right? Uh, but it won't happen in like uh, other other programming languages because these are defined; these are different concepts. So this is again related to emulation. And also, um, by convention, you must not overwrite um, registers um, or memory, uh, which might be needed by the caller, right? Also, this is part of the emulation, right? Um, in high-level languages, um, this is part of the deal when you use function, right? When you use function, like whatever you change in, in your function is local to that function, right? You don't need to be worried about like um, the stuff that your uh, your caller uh, might need, right? Um, so in C, like in, in your main, you might have, a, you might declare a, uh, a variable A, right? Um, as we had here, like for example, where, where was that? This, for example, okay? Um, so here in, in your main, maybe um, maybe you, you have uh, a variable uh, that, uh, that basically ha has the same name as a variable inside. In this case, like some doesn't use any variable for manipulation, but if it does, um, you could use the same variable uh, names in main and also some without being worried about, okay, like are these the same? Like what if I like mess uh, with the values of this particular variable that I change here in this sum, in, in this function? Uh, these are part of the deal. This isolation uh, would be taken care of uh, by the compiler, um, but here again, we need to uh, take care of it explicitly because, like, we want to emulate it. We want to emulate this um, uh, notion of function, um, and in order to emulate it, uh, we have to take care take care of this ourselves. The the programmer has to take care of this. Um, would otherwise, there is no other facilities. Um, to um, to do that for you. So you must not overwrite registers or memory which are needed by the caller because um, then you, 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 you change the semantic, right? So um, if, if after, uh, if at some point after uh, this uh, function has been called, uh, your um, caller needs a particular uh, register or memory rely on some particular values which are located in there. And if it has changed uh, mistakenly in, um, in one of these functions, then um, your program produced the incorrect results.
So everything essentially are, you feel it, right? Global, right? Uh, there is not really a, a, a particular isolation um, that your um, programming language um, assembly gives you. Um, everything is global. Hopefully, um, you see what I'm saying. Is there any other questions? Sure. Okay, um, convention in MIPS. Um, yeah, um, so how to call a procedure um, or function, and by the way, like these are typically called procedure, um, but yeah, uh, you get the idea. Um, and uh, in LC3, it's really called subroutines, um, but in MIPS, it's, it's called procedure. Um, so in MIPS, uh, you use jump and link um, as instruction, JAL, um, jump and link, um, is, is a instruction. Um, so this is an instruction that um, is, um, is designed particularly for um, um, for um, helping you to uh, to emulate um, to emulate function, yes, Ross. So, if we're talking about like compiling like a C file, for example, and when we're talking about linking, um, is are these different? Is this a different type of link, or does this, is this related to linking as it pertains to like compiling um, a C file or C plus plus? No, this is this is different. Um, okay. This this link is different, um, and uh, we'll get to that. Um, basically, uh, is referring to the fact that uh, the uh, um, there should be some mechanism. Essentially, it's very simple. So basically. Um, uh, you want to save a value of where you want to return after you are done everything in in your function, right? Um, that that's called linking. So you want to save um, the value of um, the memory address you want to return back to afterwards, right? Um, because your um, your caller um, needs to be aware of that because that, that's his um, sorry that it's task um, to to do to do it right. Uh, but very good question. Yeah, um, that linking is is the case where you want to link like um, some uh, libraries to to your main program and stuff. Right, slightly different, but. Uh, and um, for LC3, um, JSR, um, jump to subroutine, um, um, return from procedure um, in MIPS, um, jump register, you use jump register um, in LC3, return from subroutine, uh, RD. Um, argument value, as we discussed, um, by default, uh, you should use A0 to A3 um, in order to pass arguments um, to the function. And for return values, um, you should use V0 to return the results um, and to, um, um, to the caller. Okay, so um, this is one example, um, high level code, you have a main um, is like um, using simple function that does nothing, uh, get uh, nothing as a uh, argument and return nothing as a result. So it's like, uh, like, um, no op 
operation, right? Um, so with, um, this function does nothing, right? And then you add B and C, um, put it uh, into A, right? Um, that's, um, I mean, one um, very simple code, right? Um, this is the corresponding into uh, MIPS assembly. Um, so here um, is where um, your function has defined um, and it's really simple. Um, so um, the only thing that it does is just returns. Um, where you want to return, um, you should have an address, right? And you should know exactly what part of the um, memory you want to you want to return, okay? And this is important. Um, and make sure you understand this very uh, carefully why um, the designers of MIPS um, design it this way and why not other ways, which I'm going to ask you shortly. But before that, here you see in the main, um, again, both main and simple, simple are labeled, okay? Um, call it function here. Um, so um, here we uh, jump and link to simple um, and then we did this add, okay? So you get the idea. And you see the correspondence between here um, is non-commented, not a good code because that you should see a comment somewhere here that says that S0 um, is as, is basically is used as a variable uh, s1 as b and s2 as c okay um, it's very simple and maybe that's why that um, you don't see a comment here but typically you again i would like to emphasize when, whenever that you write code make sure that um, you make this correspondence as in as a comment right um, and i um, check it in um, your homework, right? So make sure you do that um, to make your code more uh, readable again. Okay, um, so again, um, the thing that jump and link does is, so here, um, when we call jump and link simple, uh, again, it jumps here, okay? So after we, uh, we jump, where do we want to get back to? Can anyone answer? It's obvious, where? The simple function? Uh, no, after we are done with the simple function, where do we want to uh, get back to? After simple function has executed, return. What memory address we should get back to and what instruction we should execute? Um, back to main. Uh, back to main, but what main has like two lines of code? Back, back to here. Just the second line. The second line, um, 004, 004, right? Um, Yes, um, that's, um, that's the memory location we want uh, to get back to. Uh, and add is the instruction uh, we want the program to execute, right? So, um, in terms of semantic, again, to, to make sure that you fully understand, JAL uh, is the instruction um, that not only jump, so the difference between J, you, do you remember J as an instruction, jump? So J, jump. Yes. 
yeah, so um, jump was the instruction that you give it a label and jump to a particular label, right? So it seems that JL is also very similar, and it is, but it, it, it does one additional thing. And the additional thing is that it saves the memory addresses, memory address that uh, should be executed right after um, we get back, um, we, we are done with everything in, in the function, right? So it does two things, not only jumps, but also save, um, in this case, this memory address to um, this register, RA register. Again, RA register, if you remember, if you look at the table, um, is one of those particular MIPS register, one of those um, 32 registers uh, that MIPS gives you. And it has a particular semantic, like, and by its name is obvious, return address, okay? RA, this is what it stands for. But again, like very similar, um, um, it has 32 bits, um, like other registers, um, but it, it is, it, it serves as a special um, register in MIPS. So JAL um, is the same as J, but it does additional thing that it saves uh, the memory address that uh, needs to be, um, you need to return to uh, right after everything is done in, in the procedure, in, in the calling, okay? So is that clear? So it's, it's basically one of those constructs that facilitate um, function calling um, in this way. But uh, you could also implement this uh, uh, combination of uh, maybe, uh, you could also like combination of J and like writing uh, the right value to, um, to a, a register, not necessarily return address. You could emulate this instruction in some way if you want it, uh, but this instruction is there for you to, to use. It gives you the ability to execute two instruction by one. Um, in the homework you mentioned in the problem too, I hate to bring up the homework, but um, you mentioned to get rid of the pseudo instructions. So do we need to substitute out JAL because it's technically, isn't it a pseudo instruction It's doing multiple things? Um, JAL, um, you, can, you can use JAL, um, yeah. In, in, in this case, you can, you can use JAL and JAL, JAL to be clear is not, um, not a pseudo instruction, right? It's, um, is basically um, um, yeah um, is is not pseudo instruction, but you can certainly uh, do it. As I mentioned, uh, you can you can use jump and uh, and writing the right value in this case, like um, uh, PC uh, plus four. Um, or basically incremented PC. Um, so um, you want to um, put incremented PC into a register, um, not necessarily return address register. You could do it anything, but uh, sticking to the convention that you, <laughs> you make, but you don't want to do that, right? Because like it, it, your code become unreadable, become readable only for you. <laughs> and this looks weird uh, because everybody like use this convention uh, in order to take care of um, function call. But that was that was a good question, Eric. Thanks. Um, so now I'm asking. Now that you uh, you got the idea, you you got the semantic behind uh, JAL. I'm asking like, uh, why uh, why do we want to use um, a register for this case. Doesn't returning to a particular label uh, facilitate this? 
like couldn't we uh, use a label to jump to a label um, to facilitate this? Because jumping to a label also was the way to um, uh, to actually uh, return to the place we wanted or jump to a place we wanted in memory. Why we don't use it here in function call? Anyone wants to address this, answer this? And if anyone can answer it correctly, um, she gets an extra point or he gets. There's people also answering in chat. So I just wanna make sure they don't get chatted. Let me see. Okay, uh, Charlie saying that because registers are the fastest place to hold data. Interesting, mm, I like it. Any other um, answer? Maybe, um, maybe let's 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 do it quickly. Um, I'm uh, the return address is needed because the same procedure could be called from several parts of the program. Can you repeat that again? Um, I wrote it in chat. The return address is needed because the same procedure could be called from several parts of the program. Okay, so what? That's why you use a register? Uh, that's just my best guess. So, so what would happen? Like why, why this is a problem? Uh, if uh I, I mean, the, the, I think the biggest problem would probably be if it's called somewhere else in the program and it returns to the default location in main, then your code is broken at that point because it's not, like the plan logical flow is not moving in the way that you designed it. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for, for complimenting um, each other. Um, yeah, Charlie, Eric. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and hopefully others uh, got this um, and to elaborate, right? So um, let me quickly uh, maybe um, elaborate on this. Um, this is hopefully for, um, for you guys, um, for all is clear, but uh, let me quickly um, create a Okay, um, so um, the thing is that uh, if um, if we use, for example, like um, simple as a um, um, simple as a as a uh, function, right, um, and then. Um, we want to, um, instead of uh, uh, returning to um, to an address which is specified by um, by return address, right? Um, so we want to jump to um, maybe. To a label like it's called the return address, right? And then here in in your main, um, then like um, you um, you jump to main, okay? Um, and then um, next um, you want to um, you want to have right? You want to get back right after um, after this and you could 
put a uh, put this label here, right? Um, to make sure that um, you jump back uh, to this, and then you add uh, you add your stuff, right? You you have your next um, next stuff. Um, next instruction right in this case was um adding this um, um basically it's one and it's two um to to continue with the rest right uh, um, but the problem is that uh, yeah that's fine if you want to use this function only like in this place right but if down the line like you have like multiple instruction like uh, you add another add you add another subtraction like whatever um, and then you want to like again uh, jump to um, simple okay uh, but next you want to after this you want to like then again maybe you want to have an add here you want to get back to this place but what it does is that it returns it once you call it, it it goes here and then jump to return address here which is incorrect uh, right uh, and that's that's the uh, key thing you want to you want to like where, wherever that you call a function you want to get back uh, to the place that uh, you call it. And there is no guarantee in your program. And if you want to call a function only once in your program, that's that's fine. But typically that's not the case that will happen. Typically you will call your function multiple times throughout your program. Um, because one of the benefit of having a function is uh, reusability. Um, so this would not work uh, was a maybe um, was a quick uh, solution, but actually is not a good solution, right? Uh, it could work if you, you, you're sure that you will use it in uh, only call it once, uh, but it is not a um, beautiful solution for this. So you got the idea, like why uh, the designer of MIPS uh, has designed particular instruction and like you communicate with, um, your function through a register because register uh, and if you stick with this convention, you can put any address into register appropriately. And JAL actually every time that you use it, uh, put the incremented uh, PC into RA register, and that's all the time will happen. All the time, no matter what part of the code, uh, what part of the memory. Uh, uh, you 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 call uh, your function, okay? So this is this is very important to to know. So I wanted to emphasize again. This is related to the why. So uh, you you get the idea why this design decision has been made. Um, so JL jumps to simple, save the incremented uh, PC uh, PC plus four in the return address register um, RA. Um, in this case, um, this particular uh, address. And in LC3, um, JSR um, jump subroutine puts the return address in R7. Again, one of those, um, the same reason true for LC3 communicating return address to a register. Um, and um, uh, jump register is um, using our A register to return to um, the address we wanted to, and um, LC3 use RET uh, instruction. And, and And you see the difference, right, between between MIPS and LC3, right? Um, can anyone um, mention about uh, a very 
uh, a very important uh, concept that we have discussed uh, in this course uh, and connected to this particular last item uh, is using jump register in um, and MIPS and using RET uh, instruction in LC3 um, in terms of designing um, uh, uh, um, an architecture. Uh, what is what is the difference? Um, does anyone have any 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 comments about this? Right? What is the difference essentially that you see or any similarity that you see between these two? And think about the instruction type. Maybe uh, think about the names of these uh, instructions, semantic of, of it. Any comment? that you want to um, to have here. It's, it's not difficult. Here, um, Uh, we have it right um, in LC3. RIT is used, um, but think about like jump register semantic, and when you can um, when you can use this. reusability of an in instruction. I'm referring to this. Uh, functions and procedures allows the programmer to focus on just one portion of the task at a time. Okay. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more? Um, it's like a, a tool for programmers to use to make the program easier to understand. Yeah, uh, but, but what I'm asking here is about this return instruction and the contrast that you might see between uh, LC3 and MIPS, right? So the thing that you mentioned is, yeah, um, important um, exactly but it's for the whole function stuff, right? Um, having the capability okay. of like defining a function, but what I'm asking is like a smaller uh, thing, but somehow important in design decisions uh, about like instruction for a particular, uh, to make something happen uh, in, in program, right? When, when you are designing a particular instruction, um, Does it have anything to do with like in LC3? I mean, it, it says a subroutine as opposed to MIPS where we're jumping. So a subroutine sounds more like composition as opposed to jumping, which like might not necessarily mean it needs to be so something of composition. Like you don't, it doesn't need to be like um, a part of the, the function necessarily. You can jump somewhere else in the code to execute that rather than it being contained in all explicitly in one, uh, you know, part, if you will. Exactly, exactly. This is exactly what I wanted to hear. Thanks, Ross. But do you want to elaborate? Uh, like, which one would you prefer? Like, if you were the designer of this, which one would you prefer? Um, Why? Probably MIPS, because, um, like, while you should probably be maybe be careful using a jump register because like it, it may be a useful and indispensable tool, but 
you know, you should maybe still be careful about when you call it, like minimizing calls to it because, um, you know, a, a subroutine may, I guess, seem more efficient, but a jump is what I guess it may be a subroutine may be more limiting because um, you have to have everything contained um, from this line to that line um, and execute it all, not necessarily in that order, but I think you know what I'm getting at as opposed to being able to jump somewhere else and have another part of memory dedicated to something else like modularity, basically. Um, like MIPS is more, I guess, suited for that sort of thing. Um, having several parts rather than one like big thing that contains everything. It may be more efficient if you have several working parts that you can jump to when you want to. Yeah, very, very good, very good thoughts. Right. Um, to to elaborate on this, right? So if you think about it, like jump uh, register uh, as a structure. You do not necessarily need to use it in like functions if you think about it, right? So you can use it anywhere in your program if you want to jump to a address um, that is specified in a register, um, right? And do not need to be, um, uh, you know, uh, return address, right? Um, typically, when you use it. Um, as um, um, return address, then it typically means that you are in a function and you want to uh, return to the return address. So you give it implicit semantic by using RA, uh, but you do not need to necessarily use RA. You can use any, any um, particular uh, register um, that you want, uh, as long as that you put appropriate address that you want to jump to into that register at any particular place in your program, whether it is a method or not, right? Um, but return is is basically is designed for like returning from. Uh, from a uh, procedure or subroutine in SCT, right? So again, to contrast, jump R is a structure that is more reusable. So you have one structure and doing several things, right? Depending on like um, your need, right? Um, but RET not, right? Uh, again, this is trade-off. This is computer architecture making trade-off uh, in design. Uh, there is not a particular uh, preference. Like having reusability is good because you have less instruction. And this is one of the fundamental thing uh, for MIPS. MIPS has uh, some fundamental uh, properties that designer wanted to achieve, wanted to preserve. One of that was to have um, um, like a reduced set of uh, instruction. Um, this was like the idea of uh, risk that we discussed, right? Um, having a reduced uh, uh, instruction set uh, rather than complicated uh, instruction uh, like CISC um, before. Uh, this is one of the uh, fundamental properties of MIPS having a reduced set and reusability of instruction doing um, like being able to use for different um, implementing different semantics is what uh, uh, what it enables ha to have reduced set of instruction would otherwise for everything if you wanted to have like different different uh, instruction for doing like many things because in any arbitrary program, you have many things, you want to have many things, right? You want to have like, uh, uh, like all mathematical operation. Sometimes maybe you want to have like operation for getting the integral, right? <laughs> but, uh, but you, you, you cannot have like all instruction. You want to have a reduced uh, instruction and implement, reuse this instruction to implement other more complicated instruction, right? So put together a set of instruction in order to implement others, right? Um, and if you remember like um, 
in LC, either LC3 and like MIPS, we did not have a particular instruction for like, let's say for uh, um, um, subtraction, for example, for division. And we were able to implement using other instruction, okay? Uh, because of the possibilities. We know the maths, we know how to implement um, um, some operations with some other operations. Um, so why, why having a separate um, um, like instruction for like say um, uh, subtraction, if you could like add, if you could negate a number and add it to another number, uh, this would implement subtraction as a result, right? Um, so you don't need a, a, a new uh, instruction for subtraction if that's the goal you want to achieve. But sometimes, uh, even though you could do that, and that, that is a valid uh, question, even though you could do that, you still want to have a particular instruction because of the performance, because you could implement it um, in uh, hardware and hardware are way faster than software. Um, if that's the thing you want to uh, implement in hardware because of efficiency, because of performance. Um, and this is very important to think about it. Again, this is important to discuss it in macro architecture um, because sometimes uh, this makes a massive difference uh, in particular applications, right? So for example, these days, you know that ML systems uh, are everywhere. Um, and one of the reason that uh, hardware for ML becomes important is that machine learning system like uh, execute a certain types of operations, matrix operation, right? Uh, and if you could somehow implement matrix operations in the hardware, you could achieve orders of magnitude boost in performance uh, if you could do that, uh, right, instead of doing, emulating it in, um, in software, right? And if that's uh, the key operation in your system, uh, why not doing that? And that's why uh, there are so many new accelerator um, for ML system and some other like system like uh, genomics um, or scientific computing. Uh, because all of these, they have, or graph, for example, all of these, they have certain types of operation that you want to put it in into the hardware. But again, this is the design application specific um, type of, um, um, these are application, totally application specific rather than being generic, right? So you, you see this, um, this trade off again, um, is all about uh, making trade-off, okay? Okay, um, since we are um, out of time, let, let me quickly mention this and then um, we, uh, we have a short break, few minutes, and then um, we have a session for your question for, for your homework, okay? But let me finish quickly this. Um, stuff um, this is also a, another very simple um, program um, that um, you um, you have a um, function you want to pass four arguments in it um, f g uh, h and i um, and then doing a simple operation, adding F and G and subtracting it from uh, H plus I. Um, okay, and, and here it's corresponding uh, MIPS code, um, very simple. Um, you want to first, um, again, the way how you communicate with your function through register A0 to A3, 
okay? Uh, so you put the corresponding uh, values, two, three, four, five, into these registers using ADI instructions. Um, so this, this ADI was a way um, that you know how to initialize a, a register. Um, and then uh, jump and link to, uh, to the function. Um, and here it is, your function. Um, the implementation of this function is simple. You want to um, add A1, A0, and A1, which was F and G. You put it in a temporary register in this case, and then do the same for H and I. You put it in another temporary register, and then you use subtraction uh, to subtract um, uh, first part from the second part. Once you do that, then you want to communicate with your main, uh, the value that um, you need to return. And the value that you, you need to return is um, you put it in S0. Um, um, here you, you see in the comment, S0 was used for storing the result. But again, you want to um, send, uh, you want to put, um, communicate the, uh, the value through V0. Uh, then um, simply you, uh, you use add here um, to make it happen. You add zero to S zero um, in order to um, um, to um, to do this right, um, and then uh, you use jump register um, to return uh, to the return address, okay? And here you see that it's used again, jump and link, and it does uh, put the um, incremented PC into return address register. So this will be taken care of. And then uh, here um, use V0 um, in your main um, and, um, and then, um, Uh, you have your uh, return uh, results there. Okay, um, do you have any question about this? So you saw the communication between, um, between these, right? So uh, how you use um, A0 to A3 to uh, send data to your function and use V0 to send back the result um, to the main or to any any uh, part of your program that you called um, this method, this procedure. Um, okay, um, so let's stop here. Um, and then uh, let's have a short break, maybe five minutes um, and then uh, we'll start um, question answering um, those who can stay um, feel free to stay and those who have uh, uh, commitments um, we we'll record it uh, you can hear it later on so you you do not need to necessarily stay but I would encourage you to stay if you want to learn thank you 